Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the life of Peter. In fact, we're going to be talking about the death of Peter today. Well, it's clear from the text of the New Testament that Peter's death happened in the wake of the persecution um, uh, of Christians that that began when the, when Rome burned in AD 64. Um, I want to look at the end of First Peter to get some detail uh, that we we have corroborated in history, but it's it's alluded to here. We have clues about these facts here, um, and um, this is in First Peter chapter five. This is the farewell in First Peter chapter five. Through Silvanus, Silas, our faithful brother, for so I regard him, I have written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, as does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace be to you all who are in Christ. Okay, um, so Babylon. He's in Babylon. Does that mean he's in Mesopotamia? No, that means he's in Rome. Rome is Jewish code, Christian code. I mean, excuse me, Babylon is Jewish code, Christian code for Rome as a symbol of power and decadence. Um, and we use it, we, we, used, we, we continue to use Babylon as a metaphor for a place. Hollywood is often called Babylon. Um, the Jews and the early Christians called Rome Babylon. Um, in other words, the, the, the center of power and the center of decadence. So where is he writing when he's about to die? He's writing from Rome. He's in Rome. Peter is in Rome. Who's there with him, serving him, writing this all down and, and being his assistants at this time? Silas and Mark. We know Silas and Mark. Who are they associated with? Paul. In fact, in 2 Timothy, which Paul writes on the eve of his death, he says to bring Mark, tells Timothy to bring Mark with you because he's profitable for my ministry. He says, I want you to bring Mark with you to Rome. Presumably that's how Mark got to Rome. Of course, we met Mark's mom. It's, it's Mark's house that Peter goes to whenever he gets sprung from jail because Mark's mother owns the house. Um, but Mark is associated with the ministry of Paul, as is Silas. And um, Silas is the one that's been with Paul since Paul and Barnabas went their separate ways. Longer with He's been serving with Paul longer than Timothy ever has. So these two, these two men who, who have been associated with Paul are now working with Peter. And so what, what seems to be true is that both Peter and Paul are in Rome in the aftermath of the burning of Rome. That Paul is arrested first and Paul is executed first, beheaded, because he's a Roman citizen and he can't be crucified, beheaded. And his staff, his closest associates, are now attached to Peter as Peter's associates and co workers. And um, in fact, and when we studied the Gospel of Mark, we mentioned that the, the best history that we have that attaches Mark's name to his gospel says that he was basically writing down what he heard Peter preaching uh, and teaching about Jesus. And so that 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 is basically Peter's gospel. Um, what we know is that, seem to be fairly confident about from historical sources, is that Peter died shortly thereafter in the city of Rome by being crucified. That makes sense. That tracks. If he's there, that was what would have happened to him, that he was crucified um, because he was not a Roman citizen. Um, now, the primary sources that we have um, are Eusebius and his ecclesiastic, ecclesiastical history, which was written in the early decades of the 300s. And in other words, more than 200, more like 250 years uh, plus after the events. But Peter is such a well-known figure and his death would have been such an enormous event in the life and the history of the church that one would 
would not necessarily doubt um, the, the the facts, you know, the central facts that he shares. Um, so uh, there's also a lot of Christian fan fiction sprouting up, apocryphal um, sources, um, um, and one of the, especially surrounding Peter, and that shouldn't be surprising to us. He's such a vivid char- character, someone that we know so well from Scripture and that we all love. So there's a gospel of Peter. That's 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 fan fiction, basically. There is the um, there is the assumption of Peter, um, which is about Peter's death and and his being received into heaven. We don't always have texts for these, but they're alluded to, quoted from, and there there are others as well. But 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 they all agree on the central facts that Peter was crucified in Rome in the aftermath of the burning of Rome, crucified during the reign of Nero. That's what we know about the death of Peter. And so we see both Peter and Paul, those two giants of the faith, um, the, the, the two main characters, um, after the Holy Spirit, of course, the two main characters of the book of Acts, Peter and Paul, in Rome at the same time, being executed in the same persecution, um, and 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 the thing that Jesus said would happen did happen, uh, all the way back in John John twenty. Well, you know, Paul says in Philippians chapter three that he wants the full Jesus experience. He wants to suffer with Jesus, and he wants to know. That not only the sufferings of Jesus, but the death of Jesus. He doesn't get to have the full Jesus experience because he doesn't get to be crucified. He's a Roman citizen. Peter dies. Peter dies, and he is crucified. And there's some sweet symmetry in that. Okay, we're going to talk about just some large lessons we want to take away from the life of Peter. Uh, Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.